Hello Fingsters. Today we're going to give you a gentle introduction to closures and decorators in Python, which is a slightly more advanced couple of concepts that you will need in your coding as you move on through your skill set. And the topics we're going to cover in this video, we're going to look at nested functions which form the basis for closures and we'll a lot of you will understand what a function is, you'll understand what a nested function is, but we need to talk about how they are different, or closures are different to ordinary nested functions. And we'll discuss why and when you might use closures and uh, the use you might put them to. We'll also introduce decorators. Uh, we'll understand what they are, how they work, and when you might find those useful. So quickly on nested functions, as you'll know, nested functions consist of one outer or enclosing function and they are wrapped around an inner or enclosed function. And inner functions are able to access the outer function variables, even though those variables are non-local to the inner function. The thing with nested functions, however, is once they are executed, those variables are no longer available for use. So they're only available during the term of the execution of the function. And we'll show you this in the code. Now, closures are a little bit different. They're a type of nested function, but with special attributes in which they allow access to those enclosing scope or enclosing function variables beyond function execution. So even though the function has executed and completed, you later on in your code, you are still able to access and use those variables. And this is done by returning uh, specific values from the enclosed function and binding them to a name to allow later retrieval and use. So why would you use them? They're effectively for efficiency and elegance in coding. And so if you had a class that only used one method beyond the dunder init, init method, um, you might choose to use a closure rather than that class. Um, they also allow form of data hiding and with data hiding, as you know, um, in a nested function, the only way to access the enclosed function is by calling the outer function. So it's not foolproof. You can get to the data if you know what you're doing, but it does allow a, a sense of data hiding. It also avoids the use of global scope. So if you've got a variable that only one function will utilize, rather than define a global variable, you can use a closure. So you define the variable in the outer function, utilize it in the enclosed function. And the final one is that, as we've said before, allows variables from a function to remain accessible later in the program. And we will show you that as we go through the coding. So decorators, we know that you can call one function with another. And a decorator is that, it's a function that calls another, but what it does is enhances or increases its functionality. It doesn't alter the original function, which is where you get the term decorator from. So there is a, a shorthand notation that will show you that allows a clean, concise application of decorators. It allows us to use shorter code when we're coding, and allows us to reuse existing functions. So we can take a function that's already written and alter the output of that without altering the original function. And they improve readability of code. So let's go and do some coding. So let's just talk about first a function and then a nested function, the standard stuff that we know. So on the screen, you'll see we have a simple function that it just applies a markup to a wholesale price and returns a retail price. And that's very simple. I'll show you that now. And there we have retail price 171. So simple function. Now, if we did a nested function and, and we'll do that to apply a sales price, this is what it will look like. And here we have the nested functions. So within the enclosing markup, we have an inner function called sale price, where we simply take the variable from markup, which is wholesale price, we apply a lower markup to give a 20% discount on the price. And then we simply call sale price. 
Now, if I now call markup and apply a wholesale price of 1.2, you'll see a couple of things happen. So down the bottom here, we've got the retail price again at 211, and then we've printed out the sale price at 187, save 11%. Now that's fine as far as it goes, but what if I want to use that later in my code? And this is where we talked about closures. So let's see if that's possible. So now that the, the function is complete, I put in a print retail price. We'll see if we can extract the retail price or the wholesale price or any of those other variables from that nested function. So I'll run that now. And there you see down the bottom, we have a name error. Retail price is not defined. And that's because as we've discussed, none of this survives beyond the execution of the nested function. So this is a basic nested function. It is not a closure because we're unable to use anything afterwards. So let's see if we can go to a closure and show you how we might fix that problem. So in this code, this is now a closure. And there's a couple of reasons for that. There's two things, in fact. One is that we're still doing what we were previously. We're printing out the retail price. But within the sale price, the nested or the, the inner function, while we print the sale price, we also return that inner function. So down here we then take that returned sale price and we bind it to a name whatever name you choose I've choose, chosen to call it special so if I were to execute this now you will see the retail price up here retail price being what it is let's do that and there you see retail price 238 however the function is now executed, it is complete. Yet if I want to now see what the sale price on that particular item is, I can call this name here. So let's do that. So here's the call. So we're going to call special. And when I execute this, you'll see the retail price come up from this. And then you should see the sale price come up from that. Let's try that. So down the bottom here, sale price to 11, save 11%. So there we have everything that was in sale price has been returned. And yet, the function has finished executing. And the only reason we're able to access that is because we passed the function to a name, which now makes it callable. And this is even if the function no longer exists. So what I'm going to do now is delete the markup function and the sale price function once we've called it, and we'll see if it's still available to us. So here I delete markup. So this entire nested function will be deleted. I will just do a print to show that it has been deleted, and then we'll call special again, and we'll see if we can still access those attributes or variables of the enclosing function. And down the bottom, there's the original return, then the fact that markup has been deleted, and yet when we call special again, it exists still. So this is the difference between a closure and a nested function. And it effectively hinges on two things, or three things. One is that you return the sale price, or you return the function. The second is you're accessing variables from the enclosing function. And the third is that you're binding them to a name for later use or calling in your code. So from now on, within this code, I can call special and it will be available to me even though the function is completed, it has been forgotten, and in this case, has been deleted. So that's the difference between closures and functions. 
And just to, just to remind you again where you would use a closure. So if you're going to do a class and it only has one method, why not just use a closure? It's a lot simpler way of doing it. It's more elegant, it's less code. It hides data so we can hide that reduction that we're giving on the special. And um, while it can be found out, it takes a bit of work to do it. So it provides a form of data hiding. It avoids us having to use the global scope. I don't have to uh, put variables up here in the global scope and have them there forever. Um, I can just define them in this one, call them in this one, and then it's done. And obviously the big thing is to access a function environment after execution as we're doing with special. So it's accessible for use later in the program. Okay, so that's closures. Now, let's take a look at decorators. All right, so decorators, as we've said before, are simply a function that you can apply to another function to enhance, alter, change the output without altering the original function. So here's a, a, a basic function, which we call markup, um, which will take a retail price and it will apply a markup and return you a retail price. And so we've called that, let's just see that in, in action. And there it is down the bottom. Now, if I want to apply a sale price to that, because this is my everyday markup on a uh, item in my store, if I wish to apply a sale price to that, I can do that by using a decorator. So I'll show you that now. So now we've added in a sale function. We've still got our original marker, the one that we use every day. But for this week, say, we want to apply a sale price to it. So we've created another function. And all that does is it takes in a function, whatever function you decide. It will then apply a calculation to that and it will use the variables or the output from that function to create a discounted price, which it will return. And the longhand way of calling that is by just calling, first of all, the sale, and then the inner function or the original function, markup. So let's see that in action. And so down the bottom, you can see that markup has done its thing and then sale has added an additional comment down the bottom. Special pricing this week only 125, save 20%. So it's taken the markup, what the markup has returned, it's enhanced or changed it, modified it and returned that without changing anything within the original function. And so this is fine but there's a, a more concise Pythonic way of doing this. So let's take a look at that now. So a way of doing that, rather than having to do that longhand version of calling sale and then the original function, is you just put a shorthand notation in front of the function that you wish to enhance. So we have sale up here, which is our decorator. To call that decorator on markup, we just put the at symbol and the name of the, the decorator in front of the function that we wish to modify. And then all we do is we call the function markup as we would normally, and yet it will return exactly what we saw previously, a decorated version, because it will also use the sale function. So I'll show you that now. Once again, the same output, it's simply a more concise and simple way of doing it. Um, so you can leave that in there <coughs> in your code and you can comment that out, remove it, add it. It's a very quick and simple way of decorating the original code that you use to apply a retail price. Um, and it just allows you to apply a sale price whenever you wish. Now, there's a thing about uh, decorators too, is that you can don't have to just use one, you can use multiple decorators on a function, and that's called chaining. So let's take a look at that. And in chaining, you're just adding 
all of the various decorators on top of the original function that you wish modified. So I've added in a second function here and that effectively just applies a label to this product to say that it was thawed from frozen, do not refreeze, must be used within seven days of opening because this is a special. So note that I've done, so we will call markup which will activate then it will call sale, which will change and provide the, the sale output. And then it will call no freeze, which will supply that statement. And I'll show you that. And then you see down the bottom. So you can chain decorators as many as you wish, but just remember that order does matter. So if you're seeing some results that don't seem to make sense, remember the method or the, the, the process of operation of this. One, two, three, and it works its way up the chain. Now these are quite simple because these functions here or the original function don't take any variables. But what if we did have variables? And in this case, we have very much the same code, but this time we're passing some variables to the original function markup. We're supplying a name and we're supplying a buy price to it. And to make this work, your decorator needs to have the same syntax. So here, and the nested function here utilizes the same syntax. Otherwise, you will have errors. Now, that's very simple in this case. So we're applying tomato suit 1.2 markup. And let's run that. And so the decorator has worked with multiple parameters that have been passed to markup. It's taken them into the sale function and executed them and then utilized those variables in the output. Now, the other thing that you may wish to do is have a decorator that's not so specific. This is very specific to this code, sale to markup. You may have a decorator that you want to be a lot more generic. In those cases, you need to get into the asterisk args and ast double asterisk quags uh, parameters or wildcards that you put in here. I'm not gonna cover them in this session because it would be too long but it might be a topic for another session. But if you really need to have a generic decorator where you don't know the number of parameters that will be passed or what they will be, then you will need to be looking at args and quags as the placeholders for those parameters. So let's go back to the slides. So in summary today, we discussed nested functions which form the basis for closures but which of course aren't closures. So we understood how closures are different to ordinary nested functions. And that was the ability, the main ability was for variables to be utilized after the function had been executed. Those variables were still accessible. And we talked about why and when we might use them. We introduced decorators and understood what they were and how they work, when you might find them useful, effectively a function that, that enhances or decorates or changes the output of an existing function without changing the existing function. And I hope that was useful to you. That's all we have for today and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.